you listen to this podcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout.
Hallelujah. Our God is turning it around. Yeah. This month, next month, and the rest of this year, yeah. the Lord will give you a testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's have a seat. Let me start from the way of um, announcements and also greetings. Uh, let me start with greetings. Um, we are glad to have our beloved brother, the husband of our sister, Brother Charles Ogu, in the house this week. Let's take a look at Charles. God bless you. Thank God for safe flight. Thank God for being at me this morning. We celebrate God's grace in your life. Um, the second announcement is to challenge us. This is the time you should get set to work for God. And let's push our children also into God's service. Amen. Amen. When I was leading the other time, I can see that, like I was telling the mother, son, I said, This girl, you are becoming sisters now. Because they are both of the same height, and she's going to be taller than the mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she said, Why? We have our children also. You know, like the old Bruce family, you know, what do you watch? The question is that where are your children? They are teenagers. Where are they? All you want to put into their lives is book. But you don't introduce them to the service of God. Where are they? They are in SS1, SS2, SS whatever now. They can't function in the choir. They can't do one thing or the other because you don't know that when you take time to bring them to place of service, when you say it's a choir practice and you take time to bring them, it's part of raising them. It's part of mentoring them. You think it's when they get to the university that's when they begin to serve God. You are making mistakes. It will be too late. It is what they are doing that they want to do. Even if their university is far away, they want to do on campus. Parents that are kata in nature, don't forget your children behind. It's not only education. Let them know more about God. When they say they are having youth meeting, release them. Take pain to take them there. Parents will take their children for inter-house sports, to go and learn swimming, to go and learn race. They have time for that. But when it is to take them to attend Bible study, they will leave them at home. They will say, you will share my you will be reading at home. If it is time to bring them to a place they can serve and see them, you know, grow in God's service, you leave them behind. You are not helping them. It is not just what they hear that you know, once in a while in the church that can help them or the money devotion at all. There is also called mentoring. When they are among their peers in the youth church, in teenage, you know, fellowship meeting, they have been trained. Many parents are leaving their children behind. And you now want them to get to a point and uh, you want them to get it. It does not happen just like that. Is somebody hearing me? I'm always thanking God that I started serving God, even preaching as a teenager. Right from second music. So these children, they have the opportunity now. Please, it's a challenge. That's what God is doing upon my heart to tell you to start with. Is that all right? And you parents also, if you are not serving God, you are becoming to this church. You cannot join choir, you cannot join mushroom, you cannot join say you don't have the time. I hear. I don't know why you want to have the time. You don't know that God holds you. The earlier you make time uh, for God, the better. Praise the Lord. 
Our vigil has been announced. Then Ignite 2023 is going to be powerful. I want you from 2nd to 6th of August. You know you always fall on my birthday week. God is preparing great things for us. It is time, it's a program that is anchored on the Holy Spirit. And the, the thing you are looking at this time is the anointed. When somebody is anointed, it makes a lot of difference. And we have some scriptures there. Praise God. Anointing for you to be an Ashiva and an anointing to be key for God's service. Everything is anointed. He is the Holy Spirit. This is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, um, the last announcement. August is a wedding month. You know that on the 26th, the wedding has already been announced. That is between our Lady Us and Osha also, now serving in Lagos. Now, that is uh, the Adebisi's, Pastor Adebisi's daughter. And uh, Mrs. Adebisi's daughter. Maybe you don't know Mrs. Adebisi's daughter. Please rise up for recognition. Hallelujah. You want to, they have been holding on to their daughter. It's okay. We we'll release you. Praise God. It's not easy. Come and ask me. I will tell you it's not easy. Shout hallelujah. But thank God for video call. Myself and my daughter were seeing video call yesterday. Hallelujah. So, we have, we have announced that. That is between uh, Tosi and Yemi, 26th. But on the 19th, of that 19th, the wedding is going to come up before this. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so this morning I'll be announcing, introducing the wedding of the 19th August. Let me invite the brother. Brother Rufus Adebuta. And of course, our sister, my protocol officer. The Lord will sanctify it. Yeah. And beyond that, the journey of marriage, God will make it easy for them. Yeah. Shall we pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pray for them. Strap out your hand, bless them. As they continue to prepare, the Lord will see them through. The Lord will strengthen their preparation. The two families who have decided to become one, God, there will be peace in the two families. No crisis, no loss, no death no destruction that God will prosper these days in the life of his children in Jesus name we are prayed Amen. Lord we thank you for your son and your daughter thank you for the dates that have been fixed and all the preparation that has been going on on the ground Father Lord we thank you on their behalf we return praises to you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Pray, O oh God, as 19th of August has been chosen. Let that day be a day of heavens upon the earth. Amen. Let the day be sanctified for them. Amen. Let it be a journey to greater heights. Amen. The 
Bible says, One shall put a thousand to flight, and two shall put ten thousands. Let their story be winners in their ten thousands. Amen. And defeating ten thousand foes. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All their needs to this day, Lord, supply. Amen. The two parents, family size, Lord, bless them. Amen. That there will not be any loss. Amen. There will not be any crisis. Amen. This shall work for them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the wedding of the 26th, also, Lord Jehovah, Lord, as the two families are preparing, Lord, prepare with them. Amen. Let's, let's continue to have testimony Amen. of your goodness in this church. Amen. For those who are believing God at the appointed time, our sisters, Lord Jehovah, choose rightly for them. Amen. Our brother, Lord, choose rightly for them. Amen. And those that are looking up unto you for any good thing that will bring a testimony, another landmark, Father, let it be done in their lives. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we put our hands together to celebrate and Hallelujah. 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 Before you sit down, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise this morning. We give you thanks for what you are doing in our church. The church is marching on. The gate of hell cannot prevail against it. Lord, I ask that this month of July, make it a great month. Amen. That it shall be our month of manifestations. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. As I have announced that this month is a month of manifold manifestation. Although last Sunday, you know, I spoke on the great, I mean, the great physician. And of course, knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ is our healer we call him a physician because a physician is not just a doctor like i explained you go to teaching hospital they say something are called consultants these are the physicians other doctors you see outside they are not physicians but those consultants they are lecturers they teach people to become doctors they don't only teach to become doctors, they mentor those who are already doctors. And of course, they also they consult. Praise God. So you can see, they teach students who are in their journey of becoming a medical doctor. And also, they mentor those who are already doctors. So that's how you go to see, you see, you can see three, four doctors bombarding you. Now, they will be doing that as hard. The doctors are many, you know. But all those doctors, they will take all those things, this and that. They will not recommend drugs for you. Your file will still go to the consultant. Praise God. Because the consultant is the lead person in that department. And as I said, if he's a urologist, he will not do the work of a pediatrician. If he's a specialist pediatrician, he will not do, you know, the work of an optician or, you know, ear and throat, or do the work of a gynecologist, praise the Lord. Everybody is at his post. But he's a consultant, he's a physician. So when he finishes what is going on that he has sent to you, you'll be moved to another department. Is that also? That is his physician. I will say, but Jesus does not need to move you from one department to the other. He is the great physician. Praise God. Yeah. Because your spirit, your soul, your body, it takes care. Everything that surrounds your life. Wholeness is the purpose. That's why he's the great physician. Hallelujah. Yeah. And of course, I will go a little bit further talking on manifold manifestation. I just showed you last week that the manifestation of Jesus is manifold. Praise God. It is in every area that they can touch every area. But I'm bringing it closer for us to see where we also feature when it comes to manifestation. The Bible has told us that creations are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. 
Now, from the scripture reading that we had in that Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13, now, in verse 10, the word translated manifolds, in that Ephesians 3, 10 means many. Manifold means many. It means variety, varieties, having many features, having many forms. That is what manifold is talking about. Rough in various colors. That is what this manifold, you know, is talking about. And all this uh, interpretation or definition I'm showing to you begin to see it coming to manifestation in your life and your situation. Okay? He said it has to do with diverse, you know, I mean, various colors, diversified manifolds, intricate, complex, many sided. Hallelujah. So when we say manifolds manifestation, you can now see we are talking about what is varied in different ways, what is diversified in different areas, what has colors, different various type of colors, manifolds, manifolds, manifold has no limitation, amen, that's a manifold of the grace of God. God's wisdom it is, is extraordinary. God's wisdom in his extraordinary plan of salvation as seen in the new and mysterious creation of the church. And, I mean, it's a multifaceted, many-colored, culturally diverse, rich, and beautiful community of believers. Now, like I said, I'm bringing this issue of manifold, bringing it to the context of the church. When we talk about the church, God in his wisdom through salvation, God decided to raise a crop of people called the church. And that's why you see that, you see, see in the scriptures that the church is referred to as mystery. People in the Old Testament, they don't know, they didn't know anything about the period of the church. Church is a mystery to the Old Testament saints. So Jesus Christ came to bath the church, all right? And the church was formally, you know, launched on the day of Pentecost. Now, it is the salvation, raising people, saving people from sin, that bring people called, we are referred, that are referred to as called out people. The ecclesia of God, that is the, uh, the Greek word for church. Ecclesia, called out. They are called out of the world into Christ, into the fold of Christ called the church. And we are now saying that this church is expected to manifest in manifolds. The church is supposed to be in manifolds. In other words, church is multifaceted, as many, I mean, it's many colored, culturally diverse. Court church is rich. It's a beautiful community of believers. Shout hallelujah. There is no other human comparison. There is no other human association in the world that can be compared to church. There is no society. There is no club. You know, at times I wonder why people don't want to identify with the church. Or why believers are not even proud that they are member of the church of Christ. Somebody hearing me? Now, you see, you see people that will say, well, I am a member of Lions Club. I am a member of, uh, which one again? You know, Rotary Club. They flaunt the club they belong to. They want to showcase it. Why? Because they believe that Rotary is international. Rotary is everywhere. Now, you see people that are a member of the Red Cross. The Red Cross is everywhere. They belong. Now, some associations, some clubs have been around for a very long time and they have can be seen in different parts of the world but there is no way you want to have it that can be compared to church such a if you are proud to be a member of the church why do you come to the church wrapping your bible inside newspaper if you are a proud member of the church 
Why are you coming to church and your friends ask you, where are you going? I just want to get over there. And you cannot say, I am going to church. If you are proud to be a member of the church, why is it that you have a visitor who came to visit you 7 a.m. on Sunday morning and that visitor can shut you down not to go to church that day? They say, why? I say, my mommy came from village. And so what? Ah, my friend, my old town friend came around and I have to take him around town. And so what? If you are proud of the association of the fellowship you belong to, are you not proud to say, well, we are going to church? Every other thing should wait after the church. Because that is who you are. That is where you belong. You are ready to flaunt it anytime. You are ready to celebrate it every time. You are not hiding it. That I am a Christian. I belong to the body of the church. Perhaps why we are not you know, proud to call ourselves Christians is because there are no fruits of Christ in your life. Is it that you are not part of this church? The manifolds, this church that manifests in so much colorful manner, beautiful ways that Jesus Christ has purchased with his blood. Maybe you are yet to be part of the church. And you just come to worship with the people who are members of the church. You can be a member of Redemption Family Church. You can be a member of Deeper Life, uh, Redeem, uh, Winners, uh, Catholic, Anglican. You can be a member. You are just counted as part of the numbers of worshippers. All right? But the truth of the matter is that you are not part of the church. You know, there is some who used to say in those days, I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Saved by grace. I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Saved by grace. We now ask, are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Saved by grace. I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Saved by We are proud to sing it out. We are proud to showcase it. Because when I say I am saved by grace, my character the next moment will not betray my confession. My relationship with my fellow brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be a cheat. I'm not going to be a bully to my wife. I'm not going to be stubborn to my husband. I'm not going to be disrespectful to my parents so that what I claim to be will be put into question. So the society today are questioning the rationale of calling yourself a Christian or being part of the church because if you say you are in the number, those that you are talking about are the people that are indeed saved by grace. Saved by grace. So when you wake up, before you sleep in the night, ask yourself, is my name still in the book of life? Am I still part of the numbers of people saved by grace? So, people are not proud to say they are Christians because their character will soon betray them. The attitude will soon betray them. The way of their dressing will betray them. Today, you see the way people dress, ladies dress, and when you ask them, they can be quiet in the church, in their church. They will expose their body, they will expose their nakedness, and before you say it, before you say Jack, you begin to speak in tongues. You say, Are you a Christian? Raka Kosi Krabba, Jesus is God. That is not the answer to that question. Is your life transformed? Is your life changed? That is what we are asking. It is not the tongues, whether it is real, whether it's original or fake. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have told you of a story in this Ibadan that um, one man went to the church for the first time 
and after the preaching that day, they said everybody must speak in tongues. All the newcomers must speak in tongues. And uh, after the sermon, they moved them to a, to, to a hall. They said they want to minister the Holy Spirit to them. Beautiful. But after they were ready to minister, and before you know it, maybe there are five or six that were there that day. And uh, before you make someone that begin to speak in tongues, ah, congratulations, brother. You are speaking in tongues. So he allowed that person to go. Before you know it, we made this particular man. He said that if this thing they are getting, I'm not getting it. What do I do now? And these people don't allow me to go. <laughs> he now remembered that he's an Isha man. He's from Isha. He began to speak his language. He began to speak his language, the Isha language. They did not hear it. Oh, you got it. Congratulations. That's how he delivered himself from their hand that day. Praise the Lord. Who knows why you speak in tongues? Whether it is your local dialect, you are telling us that we do not know. But you see, this is how the church will fake. We are not saved by grace, but we claim that we are part of the church. So the manifold church is something that the Lord created that Jesus Christ gave back to through redemption. That your sins are washed. You are saved by grace. And if indeed you are saved by grace, you should be proud of who you are. Anywhere you find yourself. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The almighty God supplies abundant grace that is commendable to our needs from time to time. Another thing I'm trying to strike is that Grace is available. When you talk about the manifold, you also say, say also that this manifold manifests in grace, in release of grace to humanity. Everything we do, it is by grace. Say that you are saved by grace. If I say by grace, I what? You are saved through faith. You continue as a Christian by grace. Oh, that breakthrough is coming by grace. Amen. Somebody hear me? That thing you are believing God for is grace that releases it. Because whatever God has made available for humanity, it is released through the doorway of grace. Or is carried out through the vehicle of grace. So grace is what God made available to us. And of course that the grace of God is so much Mighty and big and it's commensurable to our needs at all times. Say amen. amen. That's why Jesus was admonishing the church of us in Matthew chapter 6. Let me have Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. Read here. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? The next scripture, the sooner says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into pans, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And are ye not much better than they? The reason why the grace of God is abundant, even the grace of God takes care of the birds. The grace says that they bought what the next thing is going to eat. Say, my father is the one feeding them. The grace takes care of the animal. Say, are you not much more better? Say, you know, you know that day, the next scripture, verse 27 says, the first place, verse 27, he said, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? You read on the scripture. And why taking thought for raiment, clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin, they do not struggle. Lily don't struggle to clothe itself, you know, in color. Praise God. To be made beautiful 
and he might be want to use it as to decorate their houses or to decorate their garden because of the beauty that God has, you know, put on this. And I said, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon, as arrayed as he was as a king, in all his glory was not arrayed, you know, like one of his flowers. Then the next, wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the open, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Read on. Then verse 31, therefore, don't be anxious, that's what he's saying. Don't be anxious what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or where what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Those who do not know God, they are running after this. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The next scripture, he said, But seek ye for what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, the grace that brings salvation is the grace also that brings provisions. They are part of the manifold blessing that God has reserved for the church. Now, you see, God's way is different from human's ways. Oh, I am not from the church. Why? Because somebody said I should meet him in Ring Road for a contract. And that's why you are part of the church in order to go and meet that person because of business appointments. You have forgotten that if God does not build the house, the Bible says they labor in vain that builds it. And at the end of the day, you will go. You don't know that unbelievers even decide you. They know. And you say you are a Christian. If a person that says, I am a Christian, I'm a child of God, they test you at times. They will ask you, meet me when you're supposed to be in the church. Meet me whether in the club or meet me at such and such so place. When you are part of the church and you go, they mark you down. Hallelujah. They know that uh, your Christianity is not as strong as you profess. Or you tell that person and say, sir, oh, I should meet you now, I will be in the midst of service. Please, by 12 or thereabouts, we will close. Let's make it 1 o'clock. I will join you by 1 o'clock. He knows that you are taking your stand. If he gives you the job, because what God does not give you does not belong to you. Is that what I'm you have asserted, you have, you have demonstrated who you are. You have, you, have, you have carried yourself, you know, glory, gloriously, all right, and heaven is there to honor you. But when you compromise your stand and now a pattern, you run after that business, it will begin to toss you and there, and at the end of the day, the business will not be yours. And so, the grace that is in the house that should benefit you, you are not going to get it. But it is necessary for you to understand that when you come to God's presence, it is a place to receive grace unto grace. It is this grace that will advertise you. It is this grace that will make men to favor you. Because where grace is, favor is there. Where grace is, mercy speaks. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, but when you petition that which is of God, Oh, I don't come to Bible study. I don't have half the time for this. I don't have time for that. But you have time for other things. You always have time for party. Some people, they go to party on Saturday and on Sunday they are tired. They will come late to church. But whereas the party, they want to get there quickly so that they can have a better seat. But in the church, there is no better seat. Praise God, sir. I can get seats. But if it is party, you know when you go to party now in the function hall, you know where all the the mudumudus will get to you first. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I was flying back to Nigeria at that time, from uh, which we are now, and from the US to yes, US to uh, Casablanca, Morocco, that was the first time I was sit in the last seat. When the person was putting the ticket, because I said, I want a seat where I can have my legs stretched, maybe through this and that. He said this and that. I said, oh, some of them put me. I said, okay. He said, maybe you should put me. Wow. Well, he thought he was doing me good. Because instead of three seats, there's two seats there. There is a gap between me and somebody, you know. And I have. But by the time I entered, it was the last seat. 
Next time I will not sit at the last seat. Because at the last seat, back of the seat, that's where the kitchen is. Now, they will carry the food to go and suffer the big from the front. You don't understand. They throw it, they will move it. Like they were going move it by us because they must start from the front. So, which means I will be surplus. <laughs> they the fact I'm the next to the kitchen. That's why we say productivity is not connectivity. Yes, Praise God. You know what I'm The only advantage you can have is that you can stand up and say, you can walk there and say, I need water. I am closer to that. But for normal service, they will move that trolley past all of us. We do, they will go and start from the front. I said, okay, the person thought he don't do it good, then ne never. <laughs> so when I was connecting flights with the other one, I had to this place, aha, I was in the second row in front. Uh -huh. So when they bring this thing, we are the one that will get. Because if you say, what do you want? At times, you want uh, maybe you want diet coke, you want this and that, you will have, but by the time they get to the video, maybe it is finished. They will say, this one, this one is finished, uh, we have Sprite, we have, you understand, say that. It's good to be at the front. I think in the church it's good to sit at the front. Because as the grace is coming from the altar. Hallelujah. So next time it's five for the front seat. Come early so that you can occupy the front row. Shout hallelujah somebody. That is it. The grace of God is supplied. So when you appear, no wonder the Bible says no good thing shall be withhold from those who walk uprightly. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And in the right hand of God, there are prayers. Then he said, it is better. I pitch my tent in the house of, of God. I will dwell in the house of God all the days of my life. So to be in God's presence, whether in the place of prayer or in the place of worship, in the place of Bible study, it is a place to automatically and quickly contact grace. But your human mind is now saying, seek you first the kingdom and its righteousness. When the kingdom matters to you, say all other things that goes along with righteousness, grace, I mean, that grace provide shall be released unto you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I think so verse 30, uh, to which verse 38, last one. Take the apple no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There are evils in every day. But for those who are on the side of God, grace is there to preserve them. So you don't need to, to be anxious that God does take thoughts, the modern translation, don't be anxious. And Nigeria is this, don't be anxious. God who created you know that he's going to supply your needs. God knows that your business will not collapse in this economy. God knows how to connect you. That is the manifold grace of God. It's made available to satisfy you. You don't need to bother yourself. Just make sure that you are the side of God. And you, you connect to the word of grace. Because the church is raised not to fail. The church is raised by Christ to be made beautiful. To carry colors. Like the coat of many colors. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody with me this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to Bible commentators, the manifold wisdom of God is a poetic and artistic you know, expression. Suggesting the intricate nature of an embroidered pattern as in Joseph to Nick. That is the garment of Joseph of many colors. Now, when you are looking, when you talk about the manifold grace of God or the manifold wisdom of God, you know what wisdom does? Wisdom creates. Am I right? Wisdom gives back to things. So we are saying that God's wisdom in his wisdom. He has decorated the church just like Joseph had the coat of many colors. The coat of many colors. And that the royal, you know, dress, you know, 
with many colors symbolizes abundance, symbolizes blessing, symbolizes all round breakthroughs. So that's why when the reality of Joseph court, which is I wish he had that his father, according to that Genesis 37 verse 3, that his father loved him and he made for him coat of many colors. And what was the next thing that happened? His brothers envied him. He does say, and his brethren they do what? They envied him. When God begins to decorate your life, envy will come. Times you don't bother yourself about, like I said last week, about pack fighters. They are at the back. They will continue to be at the back. <laughs> Some people think that yes, ah, they, uh, you look at him. Eh? Now that face is better for him now. He's not doing younger. Can I use it down his legs? The way he's walking, eh? he's not walking like this. He's walking like this. That is how you used to walk before, but you begin to misinterpret your walk. Don't mind there. Don't bother yourself. Just know that you are seeking. The kingdom of God and His righteousness. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you. The boy wore the coat of many colors. The brothers, they envied him. And persecution came. Hallelujah. Hatred came. Hear this. Every hatred, every persecution of the enemy, we always will come to lead you to your destination. Whatever the enemy does, does not matter. It will take you to your destination. It will take you to where you are going. Hallelujah. Because the heavy of man, the persecution of man cannot truncate God's purpose. It can truncate God's purpose because you are beautifully made. The Bible says, I, we are, I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. You are judged. The church is God's concept. It's a mystery that God ejected into the surface of the earth to be glorified. To be made beautiful, to wear many colors, different shapes, different aspects, beauty everywhere. That is what you represent. That is what church is. And that's why the church of Jesus is not to be pitied but to be celebrated. Don't look for pity party around your life. Don't let see people see your tears. Don't let people say that, ah, hey, yeah, ah, sorry. Ah, the world, this world is not good though. It has dealt with him. May that be not be your story. Amen. Because whatever they are looking at as negative, the Bible says, For I know that all things work together for my good. So it doesn't matter. They see it as negative. You don't know that was what Joseph said at last. When his brother came, they said, ah, Please forgive us. Hey, our father is dying now. I hope you are not going to come and, you know, you know, uh, uh, recompense the evil that we have done to you. They bow down. They said they will not bow down, but they bow down many, many times. And Joseph said, Ah, oh my God. And that's why you must forgive people. People don't understand the power of forgiveness. The Bible says, if you don't forgive men their sins or their trespasses or their wrongdoing, say your father in heaven will not forgive you. And then if anybody is in the house today, you are seeing nothing on forgiveness. Let me tell you, you are worse than an adulterer. You are worse than a fornicator. Because no matter the adultery the man committed, the fornicator the man committed, he is going to receive forgiveness. But a man who refused to forgive his fellow brother is in danger. Anything can strike him dead at any time. Because they will understand the power of forgiveness. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. No matter what we have done, at this point I want, I'm, I'm glad to tell you that grace for salvation is available in the house. If you are not born again, you does not need fasting to get born again. Just ready to yield your heart to Christ and you'll be born again. If there is any sin you are struggling with, bring it to the altar and say, God, I am ready. I surrender totally. Grace has power to deliver. But when somebody is not seeing hatred or forgiveness, it is dangerous. 
So many people will go to hell, not because of fornication or because they stole or they did that, that but because they could not forgive their father. They didn't forgive their parents. There are people in the church today say, what my father did to me, what my father did to my mother, what concerns you there? And that's why you are still nursing, you are hating your father, you are, you are, you are some people, they hate their mothers, say my mother, ah, he's not a good mother, he shall be a mom. They know him. You are saying with your mouth that your mother is not a mother. If it's a mother indeed. What is your definition of mother indeed? Have you, been, have, you, have you been a mother before? Do you know what that woman passed through? Do you know the psychological trauma she passed through as a mother? The struggle that she passed through. You did not see. You did not know. You are not in her shoe. But because you see other people, you feel that she's not a loving mother. Now, here you are. You are also in a journey of being a father or being a mother. But you see, if you want to do yourself well, allow every hatred to go. All forgiveness to go. Make amends. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I hope God is speaking to someone this morning. We must make sure we allow grace to work for us. Because the Bible says, if you don't forgive men their sins, your father in them will not forgive you. Oh, I'm born again 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But after 25 years, you hate somebody, you don't forgive the person. The Bible says, the trespasses you think has gone, has come back into record. That's what it is. You think that, uh, after all, I don't come I don't fight, I don't do this, uh, I don't cough, I don't do this, uh, that, that, that. those are self-righteousness. Because your self-righteousness cannot make you stand in the first place. If it is not the righteousness, the clothing, you know, the clothing of righteousness, which is also clothes of many colors that carry grace that Jesus Christ puts upon you. Amen? And God is looking you at you as somebody who has never sinned. So when you now fail to forgive, what happened? You don't know that that cloth is removed from you. And the stinking clothing of sin, of righteousness, is back in your life. And at that time, you are exposed. Anything can happen. And take Satan is quick to take advantage of that at any time. So what are we saying this morning? The coat of many colors, that is what we receive at salvation from the Lord. That's what we receive at salvation. Give me Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. Ephesians 4, 24. Ephesians 4, 24. And that he put on us the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. That is the clothing. That is the grace that God supplies. That is the grace that brings many colors. That we bring to provisions. Hallelujah. Together, believers form a perfect blend of harmony and diversity. As believers, we are perfect blend as we live in harmony and uh, with our diversity. The many features, forms, and colors of fellowship in the church reflect the manifold wisdom of God. Wow. You see, the church is a beautiful place to be. Hallelujah. That all of us, we carry grace. All of us, we are beautiful. All of us, we are royal. All of us, we are putting on, you know, coats of many colors. There are things in your life that is dexterous. There are another thing in my life that is dexterous. You understand that? But start with plants together. Hallelujah. You carry this grace in this area. Another person carry this grace in this area. That's why you don't despise anybody. If there is something that is good in your life, and maybe that grace is not manifesting in the life of that person, keep your mouth shut. There is something that person carries that you do not have. To make a blended church, there is something somebody has that you do not have. Look at the choir, for example, now, when they are singing, somebody is singing auto, another person is singing treble, another person is singing soprano, right? Now, when they sing together in harmony, to come out, he brings a good what? Song. And what do you call it? Now, he brings a good song. So that song is beautiful because everybody is supplying something into the song. So we 
are there. That's why you are. We are brethren. We are together. There is something. We must relate together. We must be friends. Even when in the club, you know, begin to say we are going to club. We let's meet in club. Let's meet in the club. This is our home. It's more than more than club. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How, how does it do you? I'm speaking for our, our audience online. So our, you, our Nigerian. How does it do you? How does it occur to you? Or how do you feel? Maybe that's the grammar. Praise God. How do you feel that there is a program during the week you are not there? There is a Bible study you are not there. How do you feel? I don't know how people feel. Because for 45 to 46 years of my life, eh, that has been my life. How can I sit in the house and there is a Bible study? How can I say there is a special program in the church, prayer, whatever, and I sit back at home? How can they say a choir is meeting and I sit back at home? I form one excuse or the other. Because that is our own club. It's our meeting point. Because when we come together like this, or we fellowship, we visit ourselves, oh, Rasul, so ah, we, we share fellowship. There is something, you know, fragrance that is coming from different angles. Praise God. Amen. To show that, yes, I am in the midst of my people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is what we are called to represent. Say amen. amen. Let me have Romans chapter 11, verse 33. As I have begin to rush now. Romans 11, 33. Romans 11, 33. Let's look at that scripture. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsatiable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. What is he talking about that? What God provides, what God represents, the grace that God releases, they are unsatiable. The wisdom, how God is going to sort out your life, you cannot fathom it. Most at times you think God is going to operate, come out this way, and God will come, come out in another way. Your own is to believe God for what God is going to do. The Bible says that the wisdom and the knowledge of God, it is unsatiable. You can't fathom it. Why don't you leave your matter in the hands of God? Why are you bothering yourself? Why are you anxious? About that project, about that contract, about that business, if you are in the will of God, all what you need to do is that to make sure that the cloth of righteousness does not get out of your life. That you are in the will of God. And that God is the will of God. And of course, you connect grace every day. God, please, my life, God, help me. If there is anywhere you see that you are going down to God, meet the Lord. Let me measure up. Forgive me. Every uncleanness, Lord, cleanse me. Is that also? That is it. You, that is what you are to do. Then commit your matter to God in the place of prayers and leave it to Him by faith. He knows what to do. His wisdom is unsearchable. His knowledge, knowledge, what he knows is unsearchable. His evil judgments, you cannot fathom it. And his ways, praise God. Oh, may God show you his ways. But the one he shows you is the one you know. He shows you, say, ah, yes, this is the way. Thank God, thank God. He wants to manifest in another life of another man. He shows him another way. It is the same way to glory. But the past may be different. And that's why you see, parents, don't tell your children, you must read this. This is the course you must read. Who told you that that is how it's going to make it in life? <laughs> Praise God. Even we counselors, we allow people to express themselves. We allow them to say, okay, what do you think you want to do? Okay, if we go this way, what do you think? What do you like to be in life? You did not ask that, but because you wanted to be a medical doctor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or you want him to be something. So, now, is that for him to be contacted with 246? You begin to look for 3 rand. Uh, you begin to look out for 3 rand 32. Praise God. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. What is trending? The girl now that is bound for three years, 246 is enough to get her into university. 
Is that even when the even when Chan even said that 140 is the cutoff, I mean the I mean you know whatever. So if he has 246, if that 246 is legit anyway, it's enough for us to find a pattern like that also. But now because she wants to have the 340 something, whether because they, they announced that somebody is going to give money. And of course now he's punished for the next three years. Praise God. Which country does he want to go that they will allow her to go into going? That's why let's train our children. Let's talk to our children. Not all the guilt us. God. Let's teach them. Let's talk to them. Let's talk sense to them. Praise the Lord. Let's talk sense to them. Let's encourage them. That okay? Encourage them. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. And I got to the office, I called my son. Today is his birthday, he's 21 today. I said, you are now a man. You are now a, a, a big man from today. I said, so let's talk. Praise the Lord. He said, now, this and this and this and this. I said, the decision you begin to take now must be a decision that is different from the one you have taken before. Because now you are accountable to every decision you take. Because you are now an adult. By any standard, you know, throughout the world, you are what? You are an adult. You must be responsible for your actions. You must be responsible for whatever you do. I have to talk to him before I pray with him. Let's do, sit our children and talk to them. Don't say they should know, tell them. And let's guide them aright. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are ways that God has ordained for them. Let them find it as early as possible. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, I shall pray for your children. Don't say they are young. They are still in uh, uh, GS1, GS2. How many years does it do to cross and enter the university? If you, the day you have a teenager in your house, praise God, the remaining days you will spend in that house. It's not up to the years that she has spent in your house. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The one that she has spent, I say, ah, she's a child, she's a child. Uh -huh. She's a child, she climbed, 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 and she's 13. And you say she's a child. You don't know that the remaining days that she has to spend in your house is not even up to 10 years. Because she's going to graduate. <laughs> Praise God. Maybe you're going to graduate before she, I mean, it's even 20. <laughs> My son graduated before he's 20, he's maybe, uh, you know, before 20, I mean, maybe around 20, 20 plus. So, what are you talking about? And so, how many years? Well, now that he's not here, that he's having, so he's in my house. Are you getting my point now? And you think that when he finishes having this and that, he has to take his journey, all right? When I want to walk, want to do something, even if he's around, you, I cannot cage him again. He will be responsible for his actions. Amen. Amen. So, but there is a way God has ordained. So the grace of God has made so many things available for us. Paul referred to the church as the mystery. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations. But is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'll be stopping there. Praise God. Maybe you don't continue this time. But let's after that to reach chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. That is, the church is a mystery. Thank God you are part of that mystery. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, mystery is something that is not revealed, that is shrouded for a very long time. But now, the church is born. Right? I said Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. Colossians 1, 26. Now, you can see that is what the church even the mystery, look at it. Let's go to verse 25. Let's start from verse 25 quickly. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Then let's go. Paul was talking there. 
even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. Made manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known. Can you see now? To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glories of this mystery. That is, to these people, God wants to make known, you know, the riches of that glory of that mystery among the Gentiles. That says the church is expected to shine, to stand out in the midst of unbelievers. You are to stand out in every aspect you find yourself. Not only spiritual, in academics, for students, for those who are doing business, for those your business, you see, it, it irritates me. When you have a shop, and that shop, you just go there, you say, I did not sell. You did not sell. And unbelievers are selling the same product and they are making money. Then you should ask yourself, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Praise God. Why are you stranded in the journey of life? The mystery, which is the church, this color, this beauty, this greatness, he said, the riches of the glory of this mystery. There are riches. The church is the mystery he's talking about. Is somebody hearing me? Is the church, which is you and I. If you are born again, said there are riches of the glories of this mystery, and that the riches of this glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. That is when we are in the midst of the unbelievers to stand out, and that is which is Christ in you. Is what? The hope of glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. That Christ in you is the glory, is the hope of your shining forth. Is the glory of your building. So, as the manifold manifestation, the manifold manifestation means the church in every sphere of life. That glory of God will radiate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call it mountains. There are seven mountains of culture, mountains of significance. Mountains of show, showing forth. One of these mountains, there is mountain of education. There is mountain of business. Mountains of, uh, of entertainment. There is mountain of uh, uh, media. There is mountain of uh, politics, governance. There is mountain of, I think one more, the, of religion, that is the church. And of course, there is one of, I think I've talked about governance, and I think maybe sports. Praise God. Now, these are the areas you see people are occupying. This is where they shine forth. This is where you see people shining forth. And God wants you, whether in the field of business, to stand out. Oh, entertainment, you know, to stand out. Entertainment has come to stay. Hallelujah. But you see, you don't need to sing like unbeliever before you shine forth. Okay? You are to shine forth in entertainment, in media, in everything. God wants us the glory to be made manifest. And Christ in you. That is the energy. You are the Lord. Alright? To bring forth that glory. To shine forth. So that the unbeliever will say, Ah, he's a Christian. No wonder. Oh, it's a church man. Oh, no wonder. It is good for us to follow him to his church. Shout hallelujah. From today, you will no longer be limited. Amen. I say you will no longer be limited. Amen. There is places at the top. There are places God has reserved for you. God wants to showcase you. God wants to showcase you. It doesn't matter what you are passing through at the moment. When you live for Jesus, his grace will be made available in other areas of your life. Shall we rise to our feet as we pray this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to thank God for this, that you are part of this arrangement called the mystery. That you are part, give God the praise, that I am saved. I'm a child of God. And maybe if you are not born again, or there is one sin or the other in your life, you can tell God that God, I want to be part of this number. The number of those who are saved by grace, God, have mercy upon me. There is anything you discover in your life that is questionable. Tell Lord Jesus, I turn it over to you. 
Lord, forgive me my sins, forgive me my shortcomings. I surrender unto you. And for you are born again, tell the Lord, say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to continue in this grace. Help me, Lord, to continue to serve you, to do your will. Because that is where God will become committed to us. When we seek the kingdom of God, when you are born again, you can't just do anything the way you like. Ask God, God Almighty, I bring my life before the cross. Forgive me. Christ with the blood of Jesus. Sanctify me. Let your grace be abundant upon my life to carry me on in the journey of faith. In the journey of faith. Mashaka. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Say after me. Right now. Right now. I connect. With God's amazing grace and disconnect my destiny from the power of endless struggles and fruitless hard labor. Turn it to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That I connect today to this mindful grace, this abundant grace, and I disconnect myself from fruitless labor. You cannot pray that God, this mindful grace, let it speak for me. Let it be made manifest according to the word in my life. I am part of the church, O oh God. Let this abundant grace, this manifold grace, this grace be made available in my life. So Lord, I disconnect my destiny from the power of endless struggles and fruitlessness. Power of endless struggle and fruitlessness, I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself in the name of Jesus. I disconnect myself in the name of Jesus. I disconnect myself in the name of Jesus. Now from today, I am going to a God. I will enjoy your manifold grace. Manifold manifestations. Pray, let the beauty of my life begin to speak for us. The grace of God upon my life, let the color begin to come out. In every aspect of my life, everything I lay my hands upon. Manifold manifestations. Manifold manifestations. In every aspect, manifold manifestations. The mystery of the gospel, the mystery, you know, of the church, let it begin to show forth through my life. That when people see me, they will know, yes, this is this is a Christian. This is what God has said is going to show, you know, uh, uh, showcase in the life of his people. In Jesus' name we pray. Say my father, my father from today. Let every aspect of my life be mercy saturated and grace driven. Do you hear that prayer point? Let every aspect of my life be mercy saturated and be driven by grace. Turn it to pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, that your mercy be attend to my life. Where human beings are judging me, let mercy speak for me. Let mercy speak in my life. Let my life be mercy saturated. And let it be grace driven. Let my life move forward from today by grace. By grace. By grace. By grace. Manifold grace. My life shall be driven by grace. This manifold grace shall drive my life from today. Shall power my life. Shall power me in academics. Shall power me in my journey in life. Shall power my business. Shall power my undertaking. Let my life be grace driven. Let my life be powered, be driven by grace. That everybody will know that oh, it's not him, it is God in his life. Pray God, let my life be a mystery and amazement to people because of grace factor. That people
people will look at my life and say, wow, wow, God, do it. God, do it for me. In the name of Jesus. Pray God in my life that your grace will not dry up in my life. That your grace will not expire in my life. That my, your grace will not expire in my life. And yeah. life shall move forward as we do. Manifold manifestations. Manifestation in different areas of my life. All the mountains that I need to shine, begin to shine for. I will stand out. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. For your word that has gone forth this morning, Lord, I ask that all these lives shall be mercy saturated. Amen. Whatever sin, error, as we confess to the Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the mercy through the blood of Jesus speak for everyone in the house and those that are hearing me online in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christ. And Lord, let every life under the sound of my voice, including myself speaking, O oh Lord, be grace driven in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the grace factor drive our lives Amen. in the right direction. Amen. That everything we represent, the beauty, the color that we represent in the church, the body of Christ, from today, Lord, I pray, let it begin to be made manifest. Amen. Cause us to shine for Amen. Christ in me. The hope of glory from today as Jesus reside manifest in your life, let glory burst out Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Begin to shine, Amen. begin to shine Amen. right in high places, Amen. take over the mountains, Amen. all the mountains of significance where you need to shine, begin to be made manifest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, for the rest of this year, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. That the grace of God shall speak for us. In every direction, our children shall be taught of the Lord. And grace shall be their peace. Thank you, Father, because you are very saved. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's start, keep standing as we take the closing in. I am pressing, I'm pressing on, and I'm over what we and uh, after the song, let Pastor DBC come on.